and welcome to Cleaning Up the Mess. I'm Ira Mathur, this is CNC3. This week we have a very special show. We have one of you, our viewers, on set with us. Frauke Luning is a German musician who's been following our TV series and our Thursday Guardian columns. She's a regular contributor to our Cleaning Up the Mess at guardian.co.tt emails and Facebook website. She claims she's just a musician, but her passion for our steel pan has led to a startling discovery. The steel drums used to make many of our pans have been previously used to store toxic chemicals. They could be killing our panmen. Frauke has come here with the evidence and we hope the government investigates this claim seriously. And you may not care about environmental issues, but you must care that cancer is on the rise in Trinidad and Tobago. You must know that the water you drink and the produce you eat impacts on the diseases you get. Stephen Greenleaf is an environmental consultant who is here to tell us we ignore the environment at our personal peril. Welcome Frauke and Stephen. Thank you. Hi. Frauke, let me just ask you one question first. Have you been eating the cascadura in Trinidad and Tobago? What is cascadura? Well, it's a kind of fish. I don't eat fish. I'm okay, a well, apparently <laughs> if you eat that fish, you keep coming back to these islands. And you've come here 17 times. What is the pull of Trinidad and Tobago for you? The music. I'm a pan player, and um, I play with desperados. And I love to hear steel pan. And currently, I'm working on preserving a lot of steel band music because I transcribe it. So that's why I come here. So you actually read music and you write of music course, as I well. Of course, I have a degree. I have two degrees in music. <laughs> right. So, it's wonderful yeah. that you're helping develop our mm -hmm. national mm -hmm. instrument. Um, let me come to you, Stephen. You know, we've, we've talked before the program and you said that the environment has a direct link to our health. And it's actually no coincidence that cancer is in the rise in Trinidad and Tobago. Can you make that link for us? The Caribbean in general is the world's leading region in lifestyle diseases, non-communicable diseases such as hypertension, diabetes. Um, cancer rates in Trinidad and Tobago are climbing and there's a good chance, uh, I'd say it's very likely that a part of that is how food and water are treated with in Trinidad and Tobago. We've all seen the issues of flooding lately and um, we all know about instances of where wastewater treatment isn't really up to snuff. And um, many of the chemicals that we use in our daily lives that tend to concentrate as they go up the food chain. So if they wash off an industrial site or off the road or out of your yard, get in a river, and then end up being used to produce the vegetables or even the animals that we eat or the fish that we eat, many of the cancer-causing chemicals in the world concentrate. So even though there might not be very much of it in the water in any one time, by the time it ends up on your plate, you could be greatly increasing your risk of cancer, also birth defects in your children. Have we got any proof of this? Is there any evidence? I don't know of too much hard data available now for Trinidad, but this is a pattern that's been seen over and over again throughout the world. So it would be highly unlikely if the pattern wasn't repeating itself here in Trinidad right now. So it appears that we need to come back to some kind of quality control for our produce as well as our water. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I'm from North America where we tend to have very high cancer rates. And uh, frequently that's been linked to how we grow our food, highly chemical intensive farming has in the past, when not managed properly, ended up a public health issue, a serious public health issue. And in Trinidad, where we already have a public health system that is struggling in some ways, I think it's a bad investment to add more burden to the public health service as it stands now. And I want to come back to that issue. Frauke, the steel drums used to make many of our pans have been used to store some very toxic chemicals that you claim are killing our panmen. Do you want to elaborate on this? When I had my steel bonds, pans made in 98, I went to a factory and got fresh drums, clean and just fresh made, and I had them con converted into steel pans. But when I was 
at the pond maker's yard, and I was there nearly every day because I was interested in how they were made, I saw he had stacks of old drums there. And when I just walked around and looked at these drums a little closer, I saw that they had been filled with the most horrendous chemicals. So I told him, I said, what are you doing there? With this is very dangerous material you have there. Oh, no, he said, we wash them out with a little gasoline and we throw it down the drain. And, but you should see when we burn these drums, all the trees uh, lose their leaves. And I said, come on, what are you doing? If the trees lose their leaves, what happens with your lungs while you burn these drums? And he w seemed not to be very worried. The other, so I talked with other pond makers, and they said, yeah, we got rashes on our skin. Our eyes are, tears are coming from our eyes. And then a few, a few years later, I spoke with a guy, and he said, you know what you talk with me about these chemical drums? A friend of ours who made steel ponds died. He had an asthma attack. And now when I checked the kind of chemi chemicals that were in these drums, they were indeed causing asthma. So that was no wonder that this person died. So I, 10 years ago, I wrote a letter to the Express concerning my findings. And I wanted to make people aware that they have to be careful with this. And nothing really followed. A few pond makers were discussing it among themselves. A few tried to use these drums less. But since there are very few good drums avail available that have contained like citrus oil or um, baby oil or something, most of the drums nowadays are toxic waste. Is Pantrin Bego aware of this? Pantrim Bego has been distributing these puns, these drums to pun makers in the time that they wanted to run a pun factory. That's, that's pretty appalling. <laughs> Which companies actually produce these drums? Which companies are responsible? They're the factories that produce foam for mattresses and for slippers. I don't know, there are probably other chemi chemical companies as well that use these drums. And there's, I mean, there is nothing wrong with using chemical drums, but these companies are obliged to get rid of them in a professional way, and that they are not causing any harm for the environment. Then they could go to a facility where they are clean professionally and with all the safety precautions, and then when they're cleaned and sunblasted, they can go to the pond makers. Nothing wrong with that. But when these companies avoid paying for the disposal and selling them to the pond makers, then I think something is really stinking. Yes. Well, uh, we want to find out more about that, Frauke. Yes. We'll take a short break. As you watch, I want to remind you to send in your comments and suggestions to cleaningupthemess at guardian.co.tt. This is an environmental special on CNC3. We'll be right back.